serious don't be so ignorant knowledge is power the force the dark arts hey guys and welcome to another episode of dark arts this is where we help you guys navigate dating and uh, explore how people manipulate, influence and take control of the dating phases, either in a relationship, marriage, divorce. And so we want to help you break those particular uh, controls that people tend to try and initiate on you. And so if you want to know about some of these th particular dark skills and games that people play, then this is the channel for you. And today I'm joined by a lovely, 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 lovely lady, Whitley G. She's going to break down some amazing things. And you guys always talk to me about nasty, nasty, nasty. And I'm always telling you guys, not everybody's a narcissist. But today, <laughs> you're going to talk about it. You understand? Whitley G, how yeah. are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm alive. I'm well. I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. Good. You know? Good, good, good. So today's topic, obviously, we're talking about manipulation, narcissism, and um, all that good mm -hmm. stuff. Well, depending on where you are, it could be bad stuff. But um, yeah. we, we, we wanted to break it all the way down. So I guess I want to take it just, just maybe uh, your, your particular definition of what you believe narcissism to actually be, you know? Mm. Well, all of us have some sort of narcissism within us. We all kind of seek for validation, admiration. However, narcissists take it to another level. They crave it and they actually crumble if they don't get the admiration, the validation. So those type of people in terms of narcissists, they, they have certain people around them that prop up their false egos. So their friends could only be people who are yes men or people who lie to them and say oh your work's amazing when their work is not amazing you know um i feel like a lot of people use the word narcissist as someone who is vain or someone who is just maybe a little bit toxic um but i think i think this show will help us really break down what a narcissist is because some people feel like oh i'm with a narcissist but hopefully by the end of the show they will know okay maybe they're not a narcissist they're just toxic or wow, they actually can relate to everything that we're gonna say on this show. Um, uh, but I want to dig deeper with you in terms of manipulation tactics. And then I think people might be able to understand what a narcissist is initially. Yeah, you know what's interesting about this topic? Like you said, so many people do say the word, oh, my ex was a narcissist. Like in recent, mm -hmm. in recent um, years, a lot mm. of people now come out and say, oh, my ex was a narcissist, um, or yeah. he's a narcissist. Yeah. I mean, it's the majority of women saying this, and I'm not going to lie to you. Um, <laughs> they say that, hey, he's a narcissist, da, da, da. and I, I find it intriguing because I think what's happened is we've got a word to describe some set of behaviours, mm -hmm. and it's a buzzword. It's a bit like gaslighting, and a lot of times, yeah. I'll be honest with you, People say gaslighting so easy too. And I'm like, y'all don't really know what gaslighting really yeah. is. It's a very yes. intentional set of way of doing it. But because people mm -hmm. have found the language for something close to the behavior to explain mm -hmm. what they're seeing and what they're feeling, mm -hmm. naturally mm -hmm. the discourse or the person goes, that's what it is. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So maybe we can talk yeah. about some of the manipulation, like you're saying, break that down. And hopefully that can then give us a bit more better understanding of what narcissism really looks like as well. Yeah. So if you're talking about manipulation, what would be one of the the most <laughs> destructive or dangerous kind of manipulation that you'd say that you that you'd say that is attached oftentimes with, with narcissism? Now the thing is that manipulation, normal people can actually manipulate to get what they want. But Agreed. narcissists do it in the actual rule book. They all follow the same book, the same pattern, right? Oh. Okay. So if we go by the cycle, the first thing is a, is love bombing. So when they meet you, they flatter you with attention. They might spend lots of money on you. And once they've got you hooked, then we're in the devalue stage. So at this point now, they start to break you down. And because you're so used to the love bombing, you're literally chasing them, trying to get that admiration from them, that validation from them. And this is the manipulation that they use to get people hooked onto them. Um, and I think that not everybody love bombs. And I feel like if you have been with a narcissist, you know the difference between dating someone who truly likes you, who's trying to make a good impression on you, and someone who's love bombing you. 
because they could spend lots of money and spend lots of time and then literally nothing. And with normal people, that doesn't work like that. You know, they, they're very consistent with maybe if they give you flowers or they take you out, that's a consistent thing because that's their personality, that's their character. But with a narcissist, it will literally switch one day and it will stop and you'll be like, hey, where's my flowers? Like you're used to every week from the narcissist receiving these flowers and then they stop. And then before you know it, you're begging for flowers. That's how they manipulate in relationships. It's so interesting because uh, I want to ask this question. So, um, like you said, normal people can also manipulate. Do yeah, sure. do um, for instance, will this person not be a narcissist? For instance, I know you know some guys sometimes. And I'll use guys as an example. Yeah. You know what? They get excited about the girl, uh, but really all they wanted was just sex. Let's be honest. Yeah. Right. So uh -huh. they start doing the most. Mm -hmm. um, and then once they hit it, they quit. Would that yeah. also class as love bombing? Or would that still be a love bombing aspect? Or is that something different? No, like not different? really. They're, they're just a player mm -hmm. initially. And they're just maybe just a jerk, right? Because a lot of the time, once they get what they want, like you say, they might either go ghost or they might just pull back a bit. Or the thing is about a narcissist, it goes from love bombing to devaluation. Mm -hmm. So it goes from you know, saying you're the most amazing person in the world, I want to marry you, to you look like trash, you make me sick. Okay. In a matter of days or weeks. Whereas a player who's got what he's wanted, he's not going to do that unless he's on the spectrum of being a narcissist. Oh, okay, I love that. I love the fact that you dropped that, the the, the, the difference. So, yeah. um, and also that, that change. So mm. that devaluation, I think that's really key. I would love to, because I, I think yeah. we hear a lot of people talking about love them and love them and love them and love them and love them. Mm. But yeah. that devaluation, I'd love to take that, touch on that a bit more. So you're saying yeah. the flip is that the person then becomes, what, highly critical or...? Yes, and the thing is, it's, there's different types of narcissists, but um, the covert narcissists, they are actually very sneaky. So they will mm. never say, you can't wear that dress. They will just say, that dress is a little bit tacky. You can do better than that. So then okay. you feel like that's your thoughts. You feel like, okay, I'm not going to wear this dress because... I decided not to, but they've planted little seeds of doubt into your mind. There's some narcissists that just say straight, you can't wear that, give me your money. But most of the time, most of the people that we deal with as women, it's a sneaky covert, covert mm. narcissist. Mm. And when you say covert narcissist, I know what you mean, but just yeah, for anybody yeah, who's, uh, you know, kind of listening, like, um, mm. so are you saying there's like a different type of narcissist? There's not always... Because you said covert, so I'm guessing there's another yeah. type, there's other types of narcissists that are out Yeah, there. covert and overt. So the covert, covert, sorry, are um, just like normal people. Doctors, nurses, just people who have normal jobs. Um, and they're very sneaky about what they do. So they go undetected. So what they actually do is that they, like I said, they plant seeds of doubt into many people's minds and many people's heads. So we end up doing the dirty work for them. So if anything comes back to bite them, their hands are clean. So mm. we'll, be, we'll be confused thinking, well, he didn't do that. This person did that. So we're looking at the person that the narcissist actually manipulated and used to get to us. It's very confusing. It's no, very confusing. that makes sense. That makes sense. So um, their, their yeah. skill trait is to, is to manipulate. So their, yes. their skill trait is to yes. get you yes. to do the work in a sense so that they yes. can say their hands are clean that makes sense yes okay. mm -hmm. so that's why you will never get you will probably some people it takes 20 30 40 years to realize this person is a narcissist could be their oh. mother their father their partner and it will take them very very long whereas an overt narcissist they're just like i do not care this is what i am doing take me or leave me i don't care i'm getting away with it initially and yeah so that's that's so okay that that makes a lot of sense so that the, the covert narcissist often is one that goes undetected in society yes. Yes. Um, and is able to manoeuvre around. Because yes. uh, I think when we talk about narcissism, I think a lot mm. of people would definitely be looking for the overt narcissist. Yes, you know? definitely, um, yeah. That's all in your face and stuff. Okay. Yes, 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 um, yes. Okay, so after the devaluation um, be, it starts and, and, and what would be, would you say is the next kind of, um, set of events that tend to take place um, for the narcissist? Um, well, the narcissist, they, even though they have a certain 
rule book they are they do play things differently depending on how value how valuable you are to them so Ooh, okay. for example um in th they usually say you know you can be a pro a primary supply a secondary supply and that basically means that you're the number one girl or the wife or the wifey and then the other girls may be side chicks so in terms of the wife or the wifey that's somebody who might you know make them look like a amazing human being maybe mm. they might have money status might be a celebrity just might be like the perfect woman or man for this person so they're going to try their best to make sure that person does not leave and that person is stuck whereas the side chicks they're not really going to put in that much work like that if that if that side chick decides she wants to leave or whatever he will still try or she will still try because remember narcissists are female and male just to put that out there they will still try to get them to stay, but they're not really that bothered. If if you block them, they might be like, uh, if they're bored, they might contact you. But the primary supply, it can be very dangerous for that person to just get up and leave. So that's kind of like the difference in terms of whether they're going to put in lots of work with them or, or this person. When you say it's dangerous for the person to leave, what what, what do you mean? How, why is it dangerous for the person to just get up and, and leave? Um, let's just say the narcissist um, relies on this person for everything. Shelter, food, money, job, literally their whole life is enmeshed with that person. If that person decides to leave, then they're going to crumble initially. They're literally, they're going to be seen as a bum <laughs> mm. um, because they are actually relying and they are um, using this person as an extension of them. So mm. this part person cannot actually leave because if you leave, I will be homeless. I'll have no money. You're going to take my car away from me. I'm literally going to go from 100 to zero in literally seconds. Mm. Whereas, like I said, the side chick may not be bringing anything to the table in terms of financial game or status. It could be just a sexual relationship where they could probably get like that. That it's not a big issue if they decide to leave. Mm. Is that the same? Is that the same with the covert narcissist as well? Would would you say, or they have a slightly different kind of? I feel like the only difference between the two is just their approach to things. So, okay. um, an overt narcissist might just go into a narcissistic rage. That's when the narcissist can't handle their emotions, and they just, mm. you know, mash up property and might put hands on people. But the overt narcissist, what they actually do, if they're upset, they will never show you that. They'll never tell you that they're upset. They will still smile in your face and they'll walk out that door and they will start plotting to destroy you. Destroy you. That's mm -hmm. the difference between the two. So if you if you have an argument with a covert narcissist, you don't actually know how they're feeling. Whereas an, an overt narcissist, you know, oh my God, he or she's very angry. I think I've done something. So that's why the covert narcissist can be seen as very, very deadly. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense because I, I I can see how that, especially if he's plotting, um, mm. you know, law-abiding citizen all of a sudden. Um, yeah, I, I, I can I can I can, un I can understand that. You know, being um, um, how dangerous that can be because you're not sure where the sucker punch is coming from. Exactly, uh, and it, especially if they're a family sense. member or your actual mm. partner. You know, you could be, as they say, sleeping with the devil. Can you imagine being in bed with someone who hates you, who wants to destroy your life and you feel like you're going to build a relationship, you're going to get married and really and truly this is just smoke and mirrors. They're plotting. They're plotting. Oh, Chile. Chile. Yeah, it, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Have you ever watched the, the, the Amazon show, the, the Boys superhero show? I haven't. I have not. No. Damn. I was going to use that example because I think the, the main character, like it gives a very dark... Uh, mm. outlook into superheroes um, okay. and the main the main superhero I would say falls into the category of narcissist because it's there's so many shows it. there's so many shows and movies that they they show how narcissists move but they never put the name to the to yeah, the actions yeah. mm. and that's why a lot of us are really quite confused I feel like a lot of people um in the UK, we just say, oh, they're a narcissist because maybe they're a player or they're vain. Yeah. But I feel like places like America, they know exactly what a narcissist is. And it's it's crazy out there. It is really crazy yeah. out there. Any, any TV shows that you've watched that you've gone, yeah, that character's a narcissist. 
Do you know what? There's so many I can't even think right now. Mm. There's literally so many. I can't think of the top of my mind, but there's so many movies literally that it's it's all throughout our movies, all throughout. Mm. Even for example, I don't know if you watch EastEnders. Yeah, well, I haven't watched it for a while, but yeah. I believe that Janine is a narcissist. Janine, oh my dear. Janine Butcher. Janine. Janine Butcher. Oh, Janine. <laughs> Janine Butcher. Not Janine. If you see the way she makes, turns people against each other and the way that she wow. does things to get what she wants, she's a narcissist. She uses children. She uses, and the thing is, narcissists True. like to use people who are very vulnerable mm. mentally. I've heard um, one of my clients actually said that, you know, she suffers from mental health issues and that's what actually attracted the narcissist to her in the first place. So it's actually easier for him or her to manipulate because they're already, you know, suffering mentally. Mm. So is there is there like a um, ideal candidate for the narcissist? Because I know that sometimes, well, the narcissists also like to break uh, people and their strengths. So if they if you're mm. kind of strong, it, oh, if they admire something yes. about you, or whatever, yes, they they want to break that individual in a sense, if you're in a partnership or relationship. So I believe that the narcissists actually do like or love, people can just debate that, but apparently narcissists don't love. But I actually do believe that they see someone and think, oh my gosh, I want to be like this person. Mm -hmm. And that's why they actually befriend that person or get in a relationship with them. And they actually steal people's identities. So they might steal the way you talk, maybe the way you do your hair, your makeup, maybe your whole dress sets, maybe your whole connection list. They steal your whole identity. And then when they realize they actually cannot be you, that's when the hate comes, that's when they try to destroy you. So it's like, I can't be you, I don't want you to be you, so I'm going to mm. destroy you. It's some deep stuff. Some deep stuff indeed, okay. <laughs> okay okay so what would you say is one of one of the other steps or of manipulation that tends to take place with the narcissist as well there's literally so many so um if i just pick one out there's um a tactic they use called isolation now like that's that. when they let's just say it's a romantic setting um mm. let's just say they they want to move in the narcissist wants to move in with his partner or her partner they would say, let's go to a completely different city or country and start a new life. And what that does is that it takes the, I don't even like using this word, but it takes the victim away from their friends and their family. And it brings them to somewhere where they have no support system. Mm. Then they're able to chip away very slowly at their self-esteem, their confidence, and initially break them down. Because if that he was or she was to do that, when they have mm -hmm. their friends and family around, then their support network would be like, um, I think this guy is abusing you, you need to leave him, or this is not healthy. And it will make this woman or man think critically about the relationship. Whereas when the narcissist takes the victim away, they say things like, nobody cares about you. If they cared about you, they'll be here right now. They'll be helping you. They'll be, you know, so then they start planting more seeds and it grows into a tree. And before you know it, the victim ends up cutting off their friends and family by themselves because they believe the narcissist's thoughts. So that's a very deadly tactic um, to what narcissists use to break people down. Mm, that isolation is, um, it's, it's interesting because obviously that's a, a lot of times when I see the difference between relationships and cult like cult like organizations okay. they're very similar strands yes. in terms of yes. behaviors mm -hmm. so isolation is one of those things that happens in cult churches where mm -hmm. um the leader will create an us and them um, yes. and yep. the more that people criticize the more that they use the criticisms as a see they you can't trust them this is us it's them kind of situations that how it's, it's similar enough in a, in a relationship narcissistic abuse is very similar to um being in a cult um they do use a lot of the same tactics especially um brainwashing mm. churches those cult churches use brainwashing so do narcissists as well they use brainwashing as well mm. 
when you say, when you saying brainwashing, what I know it sounds like a googly word. So uh, brainwashing, <laughs> what does that, what does that, <laughs> what does that mean, brainwashing? So initially, it's pushing out your thoughts, your feelings, everything that makes you as a person, pushing that mm-hmm. out of your mind, out of your brain, and pushing the narcissistic thoughts, feelings, just everything about them, the whole essence, into your brain. So then you become a shell of a person and you actually become a narcissist initially in terms of, you know, your anger problems, your thoughts, your distorted way of looking at life. Um, Yeah, that's literally what I mean by brainwashing. So you actually almost become, almost, or you actually become, is it like... When I say become, it's, it can be in terms of actually turning into a narcissist, like full blown, or it can mean just the way that they think you know, not trusting anybody. I don't trust anyone because the narcissists are not trustworthy themselves. That's why they don't trust anyone. But you mm-hmm. think you don't trust anyone because that's who you are, but it's not. They've turned you into this. They've brainwashed you into this person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this is uh, profound. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, it's like uh, vampires biting someone it's, and it's into... literally it sounds when i actually describe it if i was to describe it to somebody who's never been in a narcissistic relationship they'll look at me like are you okay like this girl's a bit poo-poo. <laughs> literally it's so deep there's so many elements to it that people are just like what are you talking about mm. crazy stuff okay mm-hmm. um uh, i don't know if you can give us two more we can we can settle on five five signs. Maybe someone can, if there is five signs, I don't know. Just kind of given five signs. So we've done three. So we can go on two more, and then kind of that will that will help. Maybe someone kind of spot. Did maybe. you mention gaslighting already? I did, but we didn't go deep into it. So you can go on. Okay. To it. So if I can give you an example of the gaslighting, so mm. uh, like you said, lots of people use gaslighting and not really using the term properly. Um, I'll give an example of if you're living with a narcissist, which is an experience that you do not want to go through, could be anyone, could be just a lodger, could be a mother, father, anybody, um, they will actually hide your belongings, they'll hide your property. For example, if they know you have an important meeting or you have to go to work or something that's going to progress your life, they will remove the item. So if I say, oh, I've got a, I don't know, I have an interview with a large bank. I need to get there for 10 o'clock and I leave my car keys there. They're gonna pick up those car keys and they're gonna hide them. So I physically can't go and do what I need to do. And when I ask them, have you seen my car keys? And they say, no. And then when the meeting is over, the car keys will appear in the exact same place that you left it. That's gaslighting. But even though it's gaslighting, it's also mixed in with crazy making. Mm. So crazy making, obviously, it says it in the title, trying to make you go crazy. So you start to actually doubt your own thoughts and you actually mm-hmm. start to rely on the narcissist as a second brain initially. Yeah. 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 That is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's the proper definition. I, I like that one. That was a good one. Actually. I have to just you give know, examples because I can't give a, a proper definition. You know, actual fi- uh, f- a therapist and psychologist can give you the, the definition. I have to give you an example for you to understand how understand. how dark it is, really. Mm. No, and I, I definitely agree that. And I think that example was a perfect one to kind of highlight just to kind of, um, uh, you know, when we're talking about gaslighting, that's essentially what will be happening. And that's why I said that I think sometimes people, we are a generation now that uses gaslighting when I disagree with you. So like you say, <laughs> I saw this. And I'm like, I don't remember yeah. seeing that. I saw this. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you've gaslit me. No, I just don't remember. Like, don't remember. You, remember. Yeah. you know mm-hmm. what I mean? We have different perceptions of what we saw. But mm-hmm. like gaslighting itself is like I said, there is literal intention behind the way that someone intentionally tries mm. to make you look like you are make you feel mm. like oh my god I'm, I'm going crazy because yes. and i think the key part that you mentioned there also which may be kind of more um i think even just people who are abusive or manipulative tend mm. to use also is that trying to get you to a place where you are dependent upon them 
um, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. because that means then you can't you don't have to if you don't think for yourself it means you then have to rely on them which means you every time you make a decision you mm -hmm. run it through them yes you know? so that keeps the control yes. in a sense you know? yes definitely it's definitely a, a, um it's definitely controlling but also it allows them to be focused in your business so mm -hmm. everything you do every step that you do you run it past them which means if they don't like what you're doing, they can easily sabotage that. Mm. Easily. Wow. Why does the narcissist sabotage that if the if the if the end of the product is gonna be, you know, they're gonna still win at the end? Benefit from it, yeah. It's they're just very jealous and envious people. And they need you to be way below them so they can say like you said to be dependent on them and say oh without me you'd be nothing you know with i pay all the rent you know i bought you that car when you can actually do it for yourself but they want to be able to say that to make themselves feel like you need them because really they need you mm. they need you they need your energy they need everything which makes you you makes sense makes sense Okay, uh, and one more, one more, one more sign or, or, or manipulative tactic that they they may use as well. Um, I could give you a sign um, if it's like early stages of dating. Um, one sign or a couple of signs could be sob stories. So they use their childhood mm. or their childhood traumas as a way to get you sucked in and to make you feel sorry for them. Mm. So you know, let's just say they have nowhere to live. They would say, you know, my my mum kicked me out or my baby mother, my ex-wife kicked me out. I have nowhere to stay. And then they'll give you sub stories about how I'm trying. I'm trying to make a better life for me and my kids. I'm this, I'm that. And, you know, you start to feel sorry for them. Be like, all you need is somewhere to stay. Let me give you somewhere to stay so you can move forward in your life. Mm -hmm. But initially, that's just a way to just worm their way into your life and take control of your house and of you. And you actually end up being their slave in your own house. But they need to use that tactic to be able to even get in. It's, 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 <laughs> it's some dark stuff. And another sign is if they say, oh, my ex is crazy, that is a red flag. Now I know some exes may be crazy. Mm. I definitely understand that. But with the narcissist, they are, their exes are not crazy. And if they are crazy, they've turned because, them crazy. Yeah. Literally. With all the crazy making, the gaslighting, the isolation, the cheating, the the love bombing, it's 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 that's enough to make anyone go crazy. If that person is crazy, all it is is that that crazy ex has just realised this person's a narcissist. They've put boundaries down. They've got no contact. They've completely taken themselves out that situation, and the narcissist is actually really upset about that. So we have to try and destroy that person's reputation. So heavy stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. heavy. I mean, for you, for yourself, obviously. I mean, have, have you ever have you ever encountered a narcissist? In oh yes, was. Okay, Many. So I was to... <laughs> I've okay. I've encountered a couple relationships, um, friendships, quite a few girls, and even family members as well. Wow. Okay. So you're quite versed. Okay. Before I ask that yeah. question, and go a bit deeper into that. You yeah. said something which was interesting. You said I don't like calling them victim. Um, yes. And I want to say why? Why? Why don't you like saying that someone's like a a victim or don't like calling a victim? I f I feel like it's. I just don't like the word victim. I rather to use the word survivor. Okay. But initially, a victim is a victim. Someone because they narcissists are actually predators and they actually prey on these people that's true that's why they are victims um because they know that these people just want to get married or they want love or they want friendship and they know the weaknesses and they actually play on that that's why they're victims but i don't like using the word victim because it kind of is kind of like a trigger point for an actual victim to call mm. them a victim if that makes sense Okay, that's that's fair. That's fair. I mean, yeah, actually, right. I mean, I, I guess maybe from a from a player standpoint, mm -hmm. um, you know, we 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 hunt. 
No, I'm saying that as a past tense. I'm not going to that now. But <laughs> we hunt. We, 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 we hunt. We do. We do hunt. And I, I say this to ladies all the time. We do hunt. We are. Mm-hmm. Um, and those of us who are a bit more darker, I would say, in terms of our hunting, we are looking for weak points. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, we're looking for low self-esteem. Oh, yes. Um, we're looking for vulnerabilities. I will say this as well. Like, if you're a single mother, you need to be very careful because mm. you know, having a child it makes you vulnerable, right? Because oftentimes, again, relationships, how it can, how it can fold. Men are looking for them. Some men are very dark and they're looking for that space. Yeah, you know, that is um, true. You know, if you're from uh, any financial issues, man, m- men will look for different chinks in the armor to try and expose mm-hmm. to get in. Um, mm-hmm. and get what they want. And I'm talking about players, by the way, guys, not narcissists, yeah. but actual players because yeah. they want sex. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, there's, there's similar traits, though, with the narcissists oh, yeah, in terms definitely. of the hunting, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely. I've even heard a, a guy, I'm not sure if he's a narcissist, he probably is, say that he only goes for single mums because she has her own house mm-hmm. and he, he can move in. She has a clean house because obviously she has children and there's always dinner on the table. Which means he He's always gets a hot meal. <laughs> That's why he goes for single mums. He says with women who don't have children, they want you to take you. They want to. They want you to take them out and spend hundreds of pounds yeah. on a date, and they want gifts and they want Birkin and they want all these hundreds and thousands of pounds worth of things, which he doesn't have, and he's not even interested in trying to get for her. So that's why he goes for the single mums. I mean, it's an alignment. Yeah, I mean, I can see, I see why the brother was thinking that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't agree, but I'm just saying I can see why he's thinking that way. And I think, I think stuff like that is where I say that, where I can see, I, I can see why someone might say narcissist. I just see yeah. it as he's a very calculated man. Yes. He just knows because like if like I always say to people, like if we if we exp- like I'm doing a podcast on based on this channel, but I'm saying if I explain the thought process, I think you'd call me a narcissist. But it's not well, yeah. a narcissist. I just the way I think is everything is very intentional. And I think actually yes. I think human beings are intentional in general. Yeah. But I think people don't like to explain or say that something was unintentional. Like if you if you if you make me angry I might say, well, you made me angry and that's why I got angry rather than saying, actually, I was pissed off and I wanted to be angry that day because you said <laughs> yeah. something and I just used it as a... Mm-hmm. People don't often tell about the intentionalities of their behaviour. So when you do hear someone being a bit more intentional, which I agree, mm-hmm. some of it is narcissism, but sometimes mm-hmm. it's like, yo, that's just real. Like how men are, like, I think sometimes when men play games and stuff like this, a lot of times some guys won't necessarily... They don't necessarily sit down and go this is how I'm going to definitely do it. It's almost as if the plan comes to them. They're like, yeah, yeah that's a weak point. Let me just go for it. But mm. if you so explain it, it becomes very dark, very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think I spoke about on, on, on my podcast piece, I spoke about um, uh, a situation I said um, about, okay, so for instance, choosing a girl who's got a man. Beautiful. Because I can borrow what? you. I don't need to have you. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't? Why do I need? I don't. I don't want to have you forever. It's too sticky to have you it, it, single. No, have your man. Because then when we when we when we finish, you can go back. It's a mess out to... here. That's what I have to say. It's a whole mess. It's a whole mess out here. But I think um, the reason why a lot of people, especially women, attract narcissists is because we lack boundaries. Okay. So, for example. Um, we allow you men to come into the house. We allow you to do these things because we haven't actually been taught as children to put a line. So if there's no line, you can just do what you want. You can. There's no line to cross. You can just come in my house, eat my food, open my fridge, bring your friends round, and I'm not going to say anything because I mm. want to be liked by everyone. I don't want to um, be confrontational. And that's what narcissists love. You see those kind of women there, or men, they love those kind of people. You see now, a lot of women are saying no. Like, you have to take me on five dates first before you Mm. even see my front door. You know, you're not even going to see my children unless we're in an actual healthy relationship already. You know, a lot of things have changed now, but before it was, yeah. You guys just do whatever you want, mate. (laughs) 
<laughs> mm, so it's open season. So boundaries wise, you said obviously boundaries. that the, the lacking lacking of boundaries, lacking of boundaries, having no boundaries at all. What? what okay. So for the narcissist, how how does he interpret that then? How does he see that the boundaries are not? He sees it place? as you're weak, and I can do what the heck I want with you. I can mm. do what I want because I can now disrespect you. I can disrespect you in front of your mother and father. You're not going to say anything. They're not going to say anything. I can trash your property. You know what? I can cheat on you to a point. I will cheat on you in your bed and you'll walk in and I still won't even stop what I'm doing. Doing. You have no mm. boundaries at all. You haven't said, if you cheat on me, I'm leaving. So he just does what he wants, right? You haven't given him any rules or regulations to the relationship. He's just gone, gone with the flow. That's why I hate that word, go with the flow. Let's just go with the flow. Oh, really? Mm. How, how does someone get to that space, though, where they, you know, have no boundaries? Like, you know... I, so many know, different things, but the main thing, or one of the reasons could be childhood, you know, maybe um, that person, mother or father, or just caregiver, um, didn't allow them to have boundaries. So this caregiver could walk in their room at any time. This caregiver could go through their things and they couldn't say nothing about it. They had to hide their emotions. They weren't allowed to express how they feel. And they just think that that's normal because my mum does that, my father does that, or the caregiver does that. So when you're in a relationship and your partner goes through your phone, goes through your belongings, that's what my mum does. So it's completely normal to me. And I don't see it as a red flag at all. Mm. Oh, Chile. Boundaries, people. Boundaries. Boundaries. <laughs> is there anything else a narcissist is attracted to, too? Anything else that he's he or she is attracted to that they like to try to maybe take advantage of or... Money. Expose? They love money. Oh. They love money. Obviously, we all love money. Let's just, just be real. Like, But they love money. That like, They worship money. Um, and more than money, they like status. They like to be with the famous people because they're seen as that's an extension of them. Oh, look, mm. this is my friend who is doing this, who's this actor and this actress. Um, there's so many things, but really and truly, it's all superficial. It's all superficial. Mm. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, this, this, this narcissism is an is a interesting topic for me um, because I think, I guess, I guess would you say that separates maybe someone like a player and a narcissist is the empathy or the lack of empathy there is or some of you players ain't got empathy man <laughs> some of you players ain't got empathy, save y'all you, you told me you want to marry me now 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 look at you <laughs> i tried to save y'all but uh <laughs> no i feel like <laughs> i feel like the difference is between a player like you said they just want sex that's it that's the mission that's the end goal right but the narcissist is more than that like with a narcissist, you can say to a narcissist, okay, I don't want to have sex before marriage. He will say, that's fine. He will still marry you and he will wait. But whilst he's waiting, he will have lots of other girls doing his nonsense over here. But you're thinking, this is the man for me. He's waited a year, two years or however long that he's, he's waited. So you feel like, yes, he's waited. Because like you're saying, you're just saying sex is the end goal for a player, but not for a narcissist. Mm. They want to destroy you. They want to destroy your soul. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. My, oh, my. Yeah. So devilish. It is definitely, definitely devilish. So you said, obviously, you've encountered some, mm -hmm. uh, being in, you know, with narcissists and family-wise, relationship-wise. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you can tell us a little bit more about your experience then in terms, let's say, relationship-wise. Um, mm -hmm. dealing with a narcissist what was that like you know how was your experience look you're gonna have to just go on my channel because I've got hundreds <laughs> of videos going into this it, it, we don't have enough time for that today um, but what I can say is dealing with a narcissist for many years it's it's mind-boggling you know mm. um, when they love bomb you they actually mirror who you are as a person so you believe this person is your soulmate Ooh. Right, so it doesn't just start with abusing and this. Like you, you, they build a really tight connection with you, um, and then that's why it's so hard for you to leave as well. Um, especially when you find out who they are and what they've done. 
you know, um, they say on average it takes about seven times for you to actually leave an abuser. Mm. That's why you see women going back and back forth, and forth with this guy, knowing who he is, knowing what he's done. And you're thinking, why? But you don't understand it's a trauma bond. It might be a thing where both of their parents were narcissistic. It's mm. just that the narcissist chose to go the devilish route and we've decided to go the way of helping people. And that actually attracts one another because he's broken and this woman is trying to fix him. But while she's fixing him, he's actually breaking her. You know, it's 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 so much to it that um, once you get out of a relationship with a narcissist for even months, even just six months, months, years, um, if you do the work and you decide to heal and you educate yourself and you look at yourself, um, have therapy and find out what your trauma is, because a lot of the time mm -hmm. it could be, I don't know, mummy issues, father issues, maybe you got bullied, maybe something happened to you sexually as a child. So once you dig deep, to the root of it and try to work it out, then moving forward, it's very quite hard for a narcissist to come and do what the first narcissist did because mm. you can clock the red flags initially and you won't be so emotionally invested into it. You ask more questions. And that's another thing. Narcissists hate women or men who ask questions. They hate mm. it. And I realize a lot of us women especially me, because I can chat for England. We love to chat, chat, chat and talk about our past, our trauma, oh. our this, our that. And <laughs> you're shaking mm -hmm. your head. And the narcissist's notebook like, yes, lovely. What? Okay, I know I can abuse you in that way. That's how they're able to actually tailor make, tailor make the abuse to you. Because they find out your weaknesses, what you want out of life. And that's how they're able to shape and form the abuse where you think it's love. Mm, 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 mm. That question one, I think that's an important part piece. Oh know, yes, I think that's an important piece for any relationship. So let alone narcissists, but yeah, asking asking um, asking questions. questions. What, what, what would you say? It just on your based on your experience, what would you say some of the questions that you might you didn't ask that you wish you had asked mm -hmm. in a sense? Uh, what is your relationship like with your mother? Oh. Can I meet your mother? Ooh. Can I have dinner with your mother? Ooh. Because then you're able to see how he was raised. You're able to see the environment. You know, how does she speak to her kids? How does she treat them? What does she say to them? What's her, her home like? Is she making her kids into slaves? Is, you know, is she a person that likes to use people? Is she giving? Is she generous? Is she compassionate? We need to actually find out who raised these people before we even talk to these people. Um, that is one of the main things, finding out how they were raised because, you know, some of these narcissists have their mother and their father in their life. And you feel mm. like, okay, that's cool. That's the guy I want to pursue. But if it's toxic, it's better off that you go with a man who's brought up by a single mother, really. Yeah. It's not about mother and father. It's about, is it toxic? Is it a toxic yeah. environment? You know, um, the main thing, like I said, asking about the mother, what they want out of life. Um, also ask them some uncomfortable questions uh, such as, you know, what are your weaknesses? Are What are your weaknesses and what are you doing to try and move forward? You know, someone who's healthy would say, you know, I keep going for, you know, toxic men. And I think it's because I have daddy issues, but I'm working through it. That's mm. a woman that's actually taking her life and saying, okay, I'm accountable for my actions. I'm, a, I'm aware, I'm self-aware and I'm working on it. You know, someone who doesn't say anything like that and just says, yeah, you know what? I'm perfect. Red flag, you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have issues, we all have problems and how are we working to become a better person? That's someone who's healthy. Someone who's narcissistic believes they are perfect. They, they believe they have nothing wrong with them and it's always somebody else's fault. Hmm. I'm hearing you on this. Take accountability, my favourite Take word. accountability, definitely. Mm. So just summarising everything um, around this topic, uh, narcissism um, and, and manipulation as well, 
um, what would be your kind of final kind of summary or words to someone who may think they are in a narcissistic relationship with someone? It's so deep. I have to choose these words carefully. Um, the first thing I would say is do some research. There's millions of uh, mm. YouTube videos um, talking about narcissists, um, actual therapists and doctors who are able to break it down um, into a way that you will understand because these people are never going to change. And the reason why it's so hard for uh, us victims to leave the relationship is because they actually are the best actors in the world. Mm. They will go out and cheat on you and come back and cry their eyes out where you feel like it's so genuine. And they will scream and cry and say, I will change. And as soon as you forgive them, that same hour, they go out and do the same thing. Or they may put hands on you and say, I'm sorry, I was angry. Or they will blame something or blame somebody and say, it won't happen again and it will happen again. So we need to understand that they are not going to change, but we need to be the ones that change. We need to be the ones that take accountability for what's happened to us. I know it wasn't right. I'm not excusing the narcissist at all, but we need to take ourselves out of that situation, go and get therapy, go and just detox out this whole person or people out of our lives and move forward because they are not going to change. And like I said before, it's very, very dangerous to just leave. You can't leave and don't you dare tell them that you're gonna leave. And another thing which I didn't even say anything about is, you know, a lot of the time the narcissist family also help them abuse you. Mm. So there's no point even going to the family and saying, you know, oh, he's abused me. They will say, well, what did you do for, you, for him to do that? Yeah, he put hands yeah. on me, but well, what did you say? You know, they know exactly who this person is because they've obviously learned it from somewhere, right? They're not gonna change, the family not gonna change. Don't ask for help from the family because they all work together. Even some of your friends, maybe even some of your family members may be working with that person as well. That's how demonic this actually is. So, so sometimes you can't even trust people until you get out of that situation and get your mind right and actually see who's really there for you. So sometimes you might have to actually leave the situation by yourself or maybe that one person that you know for sure has definitely got your back. And take yourself out of the situation and get your head out of the clouds because it's so foggy. They do so many, so much things to you that you can't think straight. You don't even know what day of the week it is. You mm. don't even know what music you like, what food you like. So you're not going to be able to understand this deep, dark rooted situation that they've put you in. So there's so many um, organizations out here, domestic um, violent helplines, you can give them a call and they will give you step-to-step -step guides to actually leave in a situation, the relationship in a safe manner. They have places where you can stay with them. There's so many organizations that do help with the situation, but you can't get up and leave like that. Sometimes you might have to save for a good couple of years if you're really enmeshed with this person before you get up and leave. Mm. So, you know, the main thing is nothing's going to get better unless you leave the situation and understand what's happened to you and m move forward because literally life is so beautiful after narcissistic abuse. It feels like life is grey and life is not worth living. That's how it literally feels with these people. But I promise you, life is amazing when you leave the narcissist. You'd be surprised the the opportunities that you get You'd be surprised the friends that you make or maybe even you might even meet your husband or your wife that is literally your actual soulmate. But that's not going to happen with these people. These abusers do not change. You have to be the change. Hmm. Powerful words, powerful words. Is there anything uh, that you do at the moment that we can kind of get behind support, um, you know, just show some love for the audience, you know? Um, I'm working on a few things at the moment, but I do have a YouTube channel, Escaping the Madness. That's what I go by, Escaping the Madness. I have so many videos, so much. I've got some funny memes on there that can help <laughs> you 
make you know light of the situation i've got some things that you can really relate to and i have literally a tight-knit community on my youtube channel that help each other with experiences they are there for each other um just to give you validation for what's actually happened you know you're not crazy um also my tiktok account again escaping the madness the comment sections are going absolutely crazy with people telling their stories, agreeing. Obviously, people are going to disagree because it's an opinion. Um, but there's a community out here that people will understand what you're going through. People have been through worse situations than what I've been through. And they've come out on the other end and they're living the best life that they live in. Um, I've also got a book on Amazon called The Time to Heal Is Now. Beautiful. It's a self-help worksheet. So, you know, after leaving the narcissist, you become very angry, very bitter. And um, these work, this worksheet actually helps you to detox these negative feelings out of your system um, and also bring in those daily affirmations that will build up your self-confidence and your self-esteem. So, yeah, check out my book, The Time to Heal Is Now. And yes, that's what I've got. I'm on social media and my book and I've got some events coming up. I've got so much things in the pipeline, but you got to stay tuned to my social media so I can let you know. Beautiful. Listen, it's been an enthralling conversation. Um, it's been, been good. I've been learning, you know, I've been learning. Um, and we'll definitely have you back on here again. Um, you know, to, to break some more stuff down as well. But listen, audience, I hope you've enjoyed um, if you're catching this on replay, uh, you know, it's been a great conversation. Um, and, mm -hmm. and listen, you know, if you're if you're someone, obviously, who is going through this kind of stuff, as I said, she has a great platform at a moment, Scaping the Madness, where there's a community there. So if you need someone to talk to, you know, uh, hey, I obviously you can reach out to me if you want to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's always great when you have people who also can understand exactly mm -hmm. where you're actually coming from as yes. well so uh listen do me a massive favor audience like share subscribe and don't forget to click that very famous f that uh so, whoa this subscribe famous, button <laughs> subscribe button oh my god i like forgot my word click the subscribe button that's the button i'm talking about and then click on the the bell button okay so you and can get bell. notifications yes. you know mm -hmm. um so you can get notifications of the uploads and when we go live as well it's been amazing don't forget this is the dark arts channel this is where we talk about relationships helping you navigate so that you don't have to be in spaces where you're being controlled manipulated or influenced in a, in a way that you don't want to be so if you're tired of being played this mm -hmm. is the channel for you much love and appreciation we'll see you again very okay. very soon thank you so much no see you worries, soon see you there bye. guys bye bye everyone